This is a hard SQL question on LeetCode. Only 36% of the submissions have been accepted. I'll show you multiple ways to solve this question and which one I recommend. This question is called Trips and Users. There are two tables, Trips and Users. The Trips table holds data for taxi trips. There's a primary key called ID. There are foreign keys for the client and the driver, which link to the Users table. The status can be either completed, cancelled by the driver or cancelled by the client. The request at is the date of the trip. In the users table, there's an ID, a band value of either yes or no, and a role of either client, driver or partner. There's something here called a cancellation rate. This is calculated by dividing the number of cancelled requests, either by the client or by the driver with unbanned users, by the total number of requests with unbanned users on that day. That's interesting. How is it relevant? We can see the question that we need to answer here. We need to write a solution to find the cancellation rate of requests with unbanned users each day between the 1st of October 2013 and the 3rd of October 2013. The cancellation rate should be rounded to two decimal points. Both the client and driver must not be banned, and the result table can be in any order. So that's the question. What does the answer look like? Fortunately, LeetCode provides some expected output, so we know what our query results need to look like. We can scroll down to this example 1 section. We can see some data in the trips table. There are 10 rows here over a few days. In the users table there are 8 rows, with a mix of clients and drivers, with one banned user. A little further down is the output, which is the expected output for this solution. We see one row for each day then a cancellation rate which is a decimal value. Below this there is an explanation. There's a few points for each day to explain how these cancellation rates were calculated. Let's try to understand this before we write our SQL. On the 1st of October there were 4 requests. If we scroll back up to the sample data, we can see that this is true. In the explanation it says that the request with the ID of 2 was made by a banned client, with a user ID of 2, so it is ignored in the calculation. We can scroll up to see that trip ID 2 has a client ID of 2, and in the users table, the user ID of 2 is banned. So that trip is excluded from the calculation. It says that there are now 3 unbanned requests in total, and 1 is cancelled, which makes a cancellation rate of 1 out of 3, or 0.33. That makes sense. For the 2nd of October, there are 3 requests and 0 cancelled, but 1 is excluded because it's from a banned client making a cancellation rate of 0 of 2, or 0. So how do we write this query? The expected output looks like there is one row for each date, and our input data has many rows for each date, so we need some kind of grouping. Let's start with something fairly simple. We want to see the date of the trip and the total number of trips for that date. We can run this query and after a moment the results are shown. It says it is a wrong answer. This is okay as we have just written a query that does not calculate the cancellation rate. We can scroll down the results panel to see the result of our query in the output section. It shows one row for each date and the count of rows. So far so good. Let's add some column aliases so they are a little more descriptive. We see the same output. So we have the date and the total number of trips. Let's find the number of cancelled trips for each date. One way we can do this is using a subquery in the SELECT clause. We add a new column in the SELECT clause and add brackets because this will be a subquery. We select the count of rows from the trips table. We filter on the status which can be either cancelled by driver or cancelled by client. We also need to match the date from this table in the inner query to the date in the outer query. We'll have to add table aliases to the inner and outer query and then match on these columns. We run this query and see the result of wrong answer. We can scroll down to the output and see a new column here called cancelled trips. There are two for the first day, zero for the second and one for the third. This matches to the values in the explanation that we saw earlier. So this works and it shows the number of cancellations. But this is using a technique called a correlated subquery. It matches rows in the inner table to the outer table. This kind of technique can have performance issues with larger data sets because each row will execute this query and perform a match. We could proceed, but let me show you another way. 
In our main query, we are grouping data by the date and counting rows already. We can add another aggregate function column to count just the cancelled trip rows. How can we do this? First, we need to define what a cancelled row is. Then we give a cancelled row a value of 1 and other rows a value of 0. Why do we do this? So we can then use sum to add them up, adding the rows with a value of 1 but not 0, giving us the count of cancelled rows. Let's see how to do this. We start with a case statement. This allows us to display different values based on logic we define. Our condition is to check for cancelled trips. We say when status in, then our two cancelled values. After that, we have the then keyword, then a value of one. We have else zero, and we end the case statement. This will return a value of one for cancelled rows and a zero for non-cancelled rows. Now we are using an aggregate function of count already, so we need to aggregate this data. We can't just leave the case statement as is. We can aggregate this data by using the sum function. We want to add up or sum all of the one values, which will give us the number of cancelled trips. So we surround this case with sum. We'll also give it a column alias of cancelled trips. Let's run this query and see the results. In the output section, we get the same result as before. However, this query is likely more efficient as it's not using a subquery for each row. We are using an aggregate function on the same set of data. So if you find yourself using a correlated subquery in the select clause, see if you can use a case statement in the main query. That's one of the ways that the solution to this can be different. There's one more area of the solution that can have more than one approach. I'll show you this later in the video. We have the total trips and the cancelled trips. Let's calculate the cancellation rate. The definition on this page says this is calculated by cancelled trips divided by total requests for the day. It also mentions the word unbanned. Don't forget this, we'll come back to this later. Let's add a new column to our results. We want to copy the logic for cancelled trips and then divide it by the count, which is the total trips. We'll give it a column alias of cancellation rate. We run this query and see the results in the output section. It seems to have done the division correctly, but the values for cancellation are wrong. Why is that? Because of the concept of unbanned drivers. The question says that both the client and driver must not be banned. A client or driver is stored in the users table and they are banned if the banned column is yes. So we need to exclude trips where either the client or driver are banned. I say either because the words here says both the client and driver must not be banned, which means that if the client is banned or the driver is banned, then they don't meet the rule of both not being banned. So how can we exclude them? We need to update our query to check the users table to see if the banned value is yes. We need to link the trip client ID to the users table and exclude those that are banned. We also need to link the trip driver ID to the users table and exclude those that are banned. There are two ways of doing this. Let's try them both and I'll show you which one is better. The first way is to add a WHERE clause to check the client ID is not in a list of banned clients, and the same for the driver. We'll use a subquery for this. We'll add a WHERE clause and check that the client ID is not in, then brackets. Inside the brackets, we select the user's ID from the user's table and then filter where the band value is yes. So we want to get the user's ID of the band users and ensure our trips are not for any of those users. We could use in instead of not in and use a band value of no and we would get the same result. What about the role? Do we need to filter on the role? Well, this design actually defines a user's relationship in two ways. There's a role in the user's table and they are also defined as either a client or driver based on their ID being in the client ID or driver ID column. So I don't think we need to filter on the role being a client because the ID is in the client ID field. But I could be wrong if the query gives us the wrong rows. Let's repeat this for the driver ID column. Our query is ready. Let's run it. We scroll down to the output and see the cancellation rate is much better. It's almost the same as the expected output, with the only difference being the decimal places. Let's update our query to round this cancellation rate to two places. We can do this with the round function. 
In the output, we can see the cancellation rate matches. So the result is correct. We're seeing a value of wrong answer because we have extra columns, so let's remove those. It's still wrong because the column heading doesn't match. The heading is cancellation rate with the first letter capitals and a space. We need to enclose our table alias in quotes to add a space, so let's do that. Our result is accepted. We can see our expected output is correct. The cancellation rate matches what we expect because we have removed those banned users. However, there's one more way to solve this. Is it better than this solution? Let's find out. We've used subqueries in this solution. Whenever we have a subquery, we should ask ourselves, can we use a join instead? We may be able to. Let's try. Instead of having a WHERE clause that checks if the ID is not in the results of the subquery, we'll write an inner join to the users table. We can join on the client ID and the users ID. We'll give the table an alias of C for client. We also add a WHERE clause to only include rows where band is NO. We can do the same for the drivers. We'll join it to the users table, but give it an alias of D for drivers. We need aliases here because we are joining to the users table twice. We also filter on the D.band value. This should be all we need. Let's run this query. We can see the result is accepted, so it has worked. We can scroll down to the output and see the cancellation rate is calculated correctly. We've used a join to the users table to filter out the users that are banned. So there are two solutions, both of which have the same result. Which one do I recommend? SQL has more than one way to get to a solution. I recommend whichever method performs the best and whichever is easier to understand. In a real database, or if you've asked this in a job interview, you would probably check the execution plan of each of these queries to see which one is more efficient. Generally, I would recommend the query that uses joins instead of the query that uses subqueries. The join method may be faster, or they may have the same execution plan because the database will translate the subqueries to joins internally. The join method may have less data to process as some data is filtered out. It's worth looking into, but both solutions work. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this next video to see another breakdown of an SQL leak code problem and how to solve it. Thanks for watching.